Hi, so hopefully you can hear me. Hey, thanks for coming. My name is Daryl Nephew. I'm with Circle Y. And uh, actually, I'm with Tucker, Trail Saddle Company. And Tucker is the one who bought Circle Y. And so we bought Circle Y in 2003. Then about six or seven years ago, we bought Rangeman. Rangeman is a predominantly a padded big company and we make custom saddles through Rangeman. And so I've been with Tucker since I was 13, so almost 40 years. And I started there sweeping the floor. I had horses, this guy worked next door to my dad. And for some reason he liked me. And so um, I swept the floors and then he learned me, he taught me how to clean saddles, to repair saddles. And then I became a saddle maker. And so I've built thousands of saddles. Um, and so uh, actually he and I, I was his first employee. Now we have 140 people who build about a thousand saddles a month, give or take. You know, so um, so we, we build lots of saddles. And so in our world, we build saddles that are good, better, best. And so uh, good saddles would be like this one. That's kind of a hybrid saddle. That costs in the thousand dollar range all the way up to thousands, depending on what you want in it. And so uh, with that, part of our journey was, is I, I'm the one that developed our trees. And the tree is the, is the form of the saddle. And so a tree typically consists of about four parts. If it has a horn, it has five parts. It has two bars, has a cannel, a swell, then if it has a horn, it has a horn. This is actually a separate piece, it's metal. And, uh, and so trees typically are made out of wood, uh, some kind of like not an oak, oak cracks. It's kind of like a, a popper, kind of a soft hardwood in order for it to expand and do some of the things that we do. Through the years, trees have been, uh, at one time, if it wasn't a raw high tree, it wasn't a good saddle. But through the years, people become more receptive to technology and we use carbon fibers, we use Kevlar's now, uh, different types of fiberglass, Dura coated. This is very similar to what's sprayed in the back of pickup trucks, but it has fiberglass mixed in with it, so it has a stronger tensile strength, but it's lighter weight. Rawhide over a period of years, if you get it wet a lot, rawhide, when it gets wet, it's real soft, then it constricts again. Over a period of years, we had trouble with it, causing the trees to twist. And so we went to this type of material years ago. Because of you, uh, we want saddle fitting is a real big issue and so I want to do a couple things one I want to give you saddle fitting 101 from a saddle makers perspective and why, how we build trees how trees are made in our industry okay and this is just not a circle wide thing this would be industry wide how, how trees are made and then um, then towards the end I'll let you answer questions I can talk saddle fit for hours okay and so um, I'm the guy who goes right out and does all the clinics uh, throughout, I'll be in Sacramento next week, China the following week. One of our distributors in China has opened up an equine resort, so we're going there to uh, help them with it. And so, uh, um, and I'm the guy that gets all the hard people. And so, if you talked to somebody because you didn't like us, I was probably the guy you talked to if there was a guy. Okay. And, so, um, and so, I want to just kind of give you just some insight. Uh, in our industry, there are tree makers. There are people that actually only build this and don't build saddles. And they come to us, the saddle companies, and they try to entice us to buy trees from them. And every one of them have their little, what they think is best, you know? And so uh, nugget number one I wanna give you is there's no standard for tree sizing in our industry. Nobody has said in order for a saddle to be semi-quarter horse tree, that it has to have a seven inch gullet, this much angle, this much rock. I'll talk about all this in a minute. There's no standard is really what you need to get. So these guys will come to us and say, hey, we want you to buy our trees because we do this. We have a 90 degree angle. We do a six inch gullet and we have this much rock and if it's thoroughbred type horses really well, you know. And then another guy comes and says, we don't believe in that, we do this. We built so many saddles that we couldn't buy all of our trees from, from the same tree guy. He couldn't provide enough trees. And so it's likely you could buy a saddle from us and it fits your horse really well then six years later, go out and buy another one because you like it and it not fit your horse like it did because a different tree company made it. Did, same saddle company, but different tree company made it. Well, that was a problem. And, uh, and you guys would get mad at us and say that our trees were twisted and we were a piece of junk and you'd kind of go off on me and i get to walk you through it. So I went through the long journey of developing trees. We actually own a tree company. And we make trees for lots of people. If I told you who we make trees for, you'd be surprised if they let us do it. And so it's a separate company, separate name, 
but we build trees. And we build trees on CNC machines that are uh, have a wood and dowel system. So they're, well, that way we know they're consistent because you guys demand that. So our tree might not fit your horse, but we know it's not crooked. And so um, I want to say, first of all, I know my saddle doesn't fit every horse. And um, I wish it did. I wish I could say one size fits all, but that's not the case. And so what you guys need to know is nobody's saddles fit every horse, okay? And so just because a saddle doesn't fit your horse doesn't mean the company stinks. It just means the saddle didn't fit your horse. And in our company, we make about 14 different tree whips. And so we make stuff for narrow body horses all the way up to drafts, all the way up to uh, mules, and we, we're all over the gamut. And so uh, most of our dealers only carry two, maybe three, three whips, okay? We make 14. And so um, so just because that saddle didn't fit, then it may mean you just didn't get the right tree whip or the right design for your for your horse. Now, how do, how do we do, how do we determine that? Saddles are made to fit normal. When you get outside of normal is when you have difficulty, okay? And so uh, you can think of saddle tree sizing we have a, what we call medium, wide, extra wide. We just call it shirt, medium, large, extra large, okay? We could use that. And so a large shirt, I was talking to this gentleman, might fit him and I the same, no, right? Might fit us the same, even though our confirmation is different. It might hang off a little bit here and not be as tight, but it fits pretty good. Well, that's how saddle fit really is. You know, saddles come in medium, large, extra large. If your horse is a large, more than likely, you can get a large and it fit more than likely, okay? The only time you get in trouble when it comes to saddle fitting is when there's extremes, okay? Things that are outside of normal. And so what would be some examples of outside of normal? A thoroughbred. High yeah. spine. High spine. High spine. High spine. High spine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give me some confirmation. Uh, slab back maybe? Yeah, slab sided. Very narrow body, right? So the saddle could slide back or even slide forward because there's yeah. nothing to keep it in shape, right. right? There's not enough twist in the tree. So that's a great example. What's another? Butt weather. So there's nothing there. Gets big yeah. really fast, right? Yep. So it doesn't get big gradually. <laughs> Everything slides right off, right? <laughs> and so, yeah. And so that's a great example. What's some other extremes? Narrow with the high weather. Yeah, very narrow body, high withered, and so this gullet width sometimes could sit right on top of it. Give me another one. You're seeing really old horses or really young horses? Sway back. Sway back. Is it, yeah, nobody makes a saddle for a sway back horse, okay? And so, uh, so there's just not, I mean, there's, there's only so much, yeah. And so, anybody else? High hips. High hips, so the saddle could slide forward and high high weather so it's out of fly backward asymmetry right a horse is bigger on one side than the other short back I short couple short yeah back. short couple we're going to talk about that so 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 saddles are made to fit normal typically when you have a problem typically i'm going to use typical examples okay so it's because there's there's something not normal now it could be just you have the wrong tree width but if your horse is a normal large you ought to be able to go out and get a normal large saddle and it fit pretty well, okay? Now, I wanna to try to ease your pain a little bit, okay? Don't make saddle fitting difficult. Saddle fitting is trying to make the bottom of this touch your horse's back. Nothing more, nothing less, okay? If the tree makes, if the bars make 100% contact on your horse's back, you're trying to disperse about two pounds per inch. It can hold about 240 pounds if you have 100% contact. Now what that means is the lighter weight you are, the less contact is necessary because you have less weight to distribute. So I had a gentleman in here earlier, or I'm sorry, it, it was a lady, and she has a young kid who's seven and a swayed back horse. She's trying to find a saddle that he could barrel race in. And I said, ma'am, really, you just need a sway back pad to keep the saddle from sliding down, but you don't care about the fit. For the most part, he doesn't weigh enough to hurt the horse's back. You know, he's not going to ride long enough, but he doesn't weigh enough to cause any problems. So really, if it's close, you're good. And so the other side of that is, if you're really heavy and you're riding long hours, then you need a better fit, or you're doing competitive endurance. So the longer you ride and the heavier you are, the more concerned you are by weight. The lighter you are and the less you ride, fit is is less of an issue, okay? Because you're trying to disperse that weight. Now the pad world has really helped. 
when you have you know the pads that absorb the nail frames and all that stuff you put that on with a good fitting saddle that percentage goes up exponentially it could hold hundreds of pounds without any problems okay and so all you're trying to do don't make it hard is make contact now most people can tell you that your saddle doesn't fit matter of fact you know your saddle doesn't fit or else you wouldn't have called that person out to tell you okay and so but most people can't tell you why it doesn't fit or how to fix it they can just tell you having hot spots or they're going through all the stuff and going through we're going to talk about that here in just a minute but let me say this the other extreme you guys named a bunch of them more than the normal people so you guys are really smart okay the other extreme is you you overthink it somebody told you something and now you're so stressed out that you don't ride your horse as much because you don't think something's not working and you overthink it don't do that okay here's here's, here's the deal with saddle fitting whenever i go out and do saddle fittings i bring all different types of trees and all this stuff whenever i fit a horse i always put the saddle on that doesn't fit and i act like i'm an idiot now, here's a saddle i think it's going to fit i put it on there Ooh, no this doesn't fit and it's really obvious okay that's how extreme i go to the extreme because if i put the saddle on that fits really well what were you say that doesn't fit what else do you have right and so i show them what doesn't fit and, and let them see it let you see it now really we all all you can really do is fit in horses be a visual touchy person okay and you're looking for things and you kind of know you know looking for bridging looking for whether just kind of touching and feeling okay and so um, we fit horses standing still but none of you guys stand still right you're going to move and, you really want to fit your horse, fit them for what you're going to do the most of, right? And so, but we're sitting there just trying to get good. Huh? Then I put on what I think is going to fit. And then you say, oh yeah, I can see the big difference, you know? I might even go to the other extreme if I've got it. And then I put on what I think is going to fit. I don't ever do it the first time. Because you need to see what doesn't fit in order to see what does fit. Um, why do I tell you all that? Because if you have to look for a problem, more than likely there's not a problem there. The saddle fitting. If you have to go and you, you're all worried and you just can't, it, a, a problem most often is very obvious, okay? If you have to find one, especially if you're riding just several hours a month and every once in a while, especially if you're riding that way, go on and enjoy your horse, man. Don't fret, don't fuss, go out and ride, okay? Now, if you're the uh, eight hours at a time, three or four days in a row, then we need to talk about it, okay? And kind of go through it. But you're, like I said, if you're riding just normal, what most people do, and you can't find a problem, there's probably not a problem there, okay? So don't, just go on and enjoy it. I said, don't overthink it. Don't become the other extreme, okay? And I know you're gonna hear something from me, you're gonna go home, you're gonna look, start looking for sweat spots, and you're not there, you're gonna think, man, I've got a problem. Yeah, it's, uh, we're gonna talk about sweat spots here in a little bit, okay? And so, I went on this journey to get trees, to uh, figure out what's normal for us. And it was a long journey. I went out to lots of places, got these equi measures, and heated them up and put them on horses' back. And they, you know, we went to the tree company. We got these. We actually have a scanner, and we can scan a tree. We put it in this computer system. We make sure it's all. I, I should have had this. I could show you the video. We make sure it's all connected together. If it doesn't, we finish it out. We put it on the CNC machine. If you guys don't know what that is, I mean, they cut engine parts with it, okay? It gets different bits and pulls it off and rotates its five axes. It's moving around, cutting out all these parts. Wood and dial system. We're going through, we have literally had an a, uh, engineer come from an uh, um, airplane place, make these different jigs just so we can check it to make sure that what we're doing is fine. We go through all this. We can now even scan your horse's back, put it in our computer system and put trees on it and make it run in and out to see where it's not making contact and all that stuff. It's a big deal because it's a big deal to you guys, right? And so um, so we want to make sure it's right. Do we always hit it? No, but we want to make sure we're at least, you know, can get you in the right direction, okay? And we want to be able to say our trees might not work, but they're not bad, okay? There's nothing wrong with them. We go through all this deal in order to do that. And so that's what, what started out to be a two-dimensional, deal ended up to be five dimensional and now we make all of our trees so the, why do we do that because we want to be able to say when you buy our saddle today and 10 years from now it's consistent the, the, the trees are the same and we know what's in it and what's going on so let's talk about it just for a minute okay let's talk about when you come in and you buy a saddle you're trying to determine whether um, 
uh, you're going to get the right one. And typically, the number one thing that you ask about when you're trying to buy a saddle is what? What size? What's the size, right? You start talking gullet measurement, right? You want to know what the gullet measurement is. This is going to blow you guys away, okay? And most people, when you measure gullets, and, and maybe you're smarter than this, they actually go to the front of the saddle and they measure from the skirt to skirt, and they say this is a nine inch gullet. That's what the measurement is from here to here, okay? That's not the gullet. The gullet is the measurement from here to here. Now, I've literally, I can't tell you how many thousands of saddles I've built. I can't tell you what the gullet measurement is after a saddle is built, okay? So the gullet measurement from here is nine inches, about actually nine and a half. The actual gullet measurement is seven inches. Okay, so it's a big deal, okay? And so it's hard when you're going in and talking gullet measurement, especially when you are trying to measure something that doesn't tell you anything, okay? It just tells you that it's what that is, okay? And this could change if it has flared out, or if it's flared in, or how the saddle's built, how they put it back. I can actually take this thing and change it about an inch, depending on how tight I want to pull that, you know, if that's going to be my measurement. Now, let me say this about gullet measurement. This is part that's going to get you irritated at us. <laughs> it's because there's no standard in our industry, there's no standard in how gullet widths are done. Medium, large, extra large, uh, semi-quarter horse, uh, quarter horse, and, and full quarter horse, there's all different ways people do that in our industry. Some people have the angle, this is the gullet width, 90 degree angle. This right here is a semi-quarter horse. If they want to make it a wide tree, they leave it at a seven, let's call the gullet width seven inches. They leave the gullet width seven inches and turn the angle out. And it's still, now, now it's a wide tree. They want to make it extra wide, they leave the gullet the same and then they change the angle out. Now it's extra wide. The gullet width never changes. It's the angle that changed in it. Is, is that good or bad? I don't know, but that's what our industry does, okay? So they change tree width by changing angle and don't change gullet, okay? They, they do this, that's one way our industry does it. Do you do it that way? Yes, we do. I'll tell you why in a minute, okay? The other way is, is you leave the, uh, the angle the same and you change the width. So it's still 90 degrees, so it's seven, seven and a half, eight. And we do that, okay? And guess what? There's a third way, okay? We have to do everything in threes, right? The third way is we do both. Now, when do we determine what's right and what's wrong? Why do we do that? Well, one way we determine it is how fast the horse gets big. So you said mud and weather. Mud and weather is a big deal. If you have a mud and weather horse, you need a saddle that gets big fast. So you need this and this because the horse gets big fast. When you have, you said thoroughbred, when you have a horse that gets big slowly, then you can leave the gullet with the same and change the angle. Okay. And so draft horses typically have a high wither on them. So draft horses most often don't use draft trees, they use wise trees because they get big slowly. Now, when you do saddle fitting, I could care less that you have a 1400 pound horse and its belly drags the ground, okay? <laughs> because in saddle fitting, all you're doing is fitting the first eight inches of the shoulders about the first eight to 10 inches from the shoulder blade, that's all you're fitting. I don't care about all that other stuff. I'm looking at that. And most draft horses have a decent set of withers and they get big gradually. And so I can actually use a seven inch gullet just with a deeper angle because of how the horse gets big. So depending on how your horse conformation is and how quickly or slowly they get big, will actually determine what uh, seat size or what tree width you'd want to get. And so um, I just designed a couple saddles for a company in Kansas that, um, oh, I'll tell you, it's Valley Vet. And um, so I designed it and they said, how come you don't put gullet widths on your deal, on, on your descriptions? And I said, because it confuses people. And they start looking at that. I said, we talk confirmation. So this saddle here fits a thoroughbred type horse that's kind of narrow bodied, high wither. This saddle here fits an average quarter horse that has decent weather. So we talk confirmation. So we don't really fit breeds, we fit confirmations. Because you guys have had many quarter horses and you've realized that one is a little bigger, one's a little, one's mud weathered, one's high weathered. But there still could be quarter horses, right? And so we talk confirmations. And so when you buy saddles, you should actually come in. This couple came in, they brought their patterns. And they, we talked confirmations before we started talking uh, saddles. And we went through what would fit. These are two different horses. Look, the confirmation is pretty consistent. And I said, you know what, really, you've got two different horses that are a large. 
they, they need to wide trees. And so as soon as I look, you, now I've done this deal so much, as soon as you back your horse off your trailer, I know which one of my saddles are gonna fit. <laughs> and I could knock this thing out in about three minutes, but you don't want that. I have to spend 30 minutes. Let you tell me your stories. I mean, listen to it. Say, oh, it's such a great looking horse. Yeah. And then we kind of go, you know, right. all the horses are good looking. Yeah. And then we just walk through it, right? Yeah. And so she pulled that out of the meeting. I said, well, that's a wide tree. I don't need to hardly go much further. And I even pulled the saddles up and we looked at it upside down and went through it, let them kind of see and tell and stuff so they could see it. But so, so in our industry, again, there's lots of ways we do go our tree widths and it changes. Now, um, when you move the gut, when you have a mutton withered big horse and you move the gullet here and change the angle, what do you think it does for the rider? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it makes it very through the stride, horse. right? Oh, yeah. And so, if you don't like to be spread out much through the stride, don't go get your big old fat horse because <laughs> you've got That's yeah, because That's when, when you move this out, when you move this out, you move this out also. Yeah. <laughs> And we can fix that as a saddle company. We have two ways. We can cut out some of this wood right here, which now I'm taking away surface contact, which used to be 240 pounds, now I'm down to 180, whatever it is. Or I can raise the ground seat. The ground seat is the base of the seat. I can make this taller so it feels narrower, but now you can't feel your horse because you're too far lifted off your horse, okay? And so it puts us in a dilemma. So we actually like the idea better in changing the angle, leaving the going with the same, because it helps a lot for you ladies that don't want to be spread out much through the stride. Every time we change out the gullet, we have to raise the ground seat or take away some of the bar in order it, for it to feel narrow, feel narrow for you. So, so that's one of the reasons why we do it. So we do one, why do we do this? One, to help with you for fit. The other one is the, depending on the horse conformation, how big do they get? And so if you're going to go buy a saddle, what I would do more than anything is I would come in with something like this or come and talk about your horse. I've got a mutton withered short back horse that has a little drop behind the shoulders. What do you have to fit it? Now most people are going to look at you with deer and headlamps, okay? But after today, Big D will be able to tell you exactly what you need, okay? Yeah, because they spent time with Daryl, okay? And so they'll be able to walk through it and kind of tell you what you got. But if you have an average horse, more often than not, you can buy an average, wide, semi-quarter horse, whatever it is, and be just fine. And if you have a horse, that, a saddle that's working, and you know what tree width it is, you can go out and buy another one. Even though there's different tree companies, all of us are pretty close. We're all pretty close in larges, okay? And so, and you can go out and get an, another large, and it fit just fine, okay? And so, if your horse is normal, when you get outside of normal, that's when you have problems, okay? So let's talk about some signs about side of normal. Does anybody have any questions on this before I move on? We I had a think. question when you were talking about, um, it depends on how fast your horse gets big. What do you mean by that? Well, well if he's butt withered, he gets big really fast. Well, while you're riding, you mean? No, I'm talking about his shoulders. He's, so some some horses are this. That's the wither. That's the wither. Okay. And they get big slowly. What does that mean? They get big well, they As it goes further down, it gets wide. From their withers oh. coming down. Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Then some okay. horses' shoulders are like this. Oh, okay. It's the slope. That gets big yeah. really fast. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, this is this is the shoulder. The slope. Oh, okay. You can buy this at Office Max for eight bucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And just mold it to your horse. Oh yeah, you can do whatever you want yeah. to it. Fits. Okay, it's called a flexible curve. It's in the drafting okay. area. Okay. okay. And so it depends on how fast they get big. Sorry. Yeah. I've never had anybody ask for that. Maybe all these other things I've talked to, people may not understand. I'm glad you asked that because I was wondering the same thing. Yeah. And so in the shoulders, in the wither, the, the faster they get bigger, the more tree width you need and more angle you need. The, the slow, if they get big slowly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. On the side. Yeah, we actually call slope the horse's back, but yeah, it's yeah. the angle, the angle. Uh, the angle of the rigging, or the angle of the weather, okay? And so if they get big fast, and I'll get some people send me these patterns where the horse is literally built like that, they have a little drop here, and so saddles are made to fit symmetrical. Now what you would have here is you would have a saddle that would pull to the right side. So what would you do? You'd have to put in a little padding on this side to make it even. 
Yeah, we're gonna we'll talk about that, okay? Mm -hmm. But what most people would say is, hey man, your saddle keeps pulling to the right, your tree company stinks, you guys don't know what's going on. Well really, all you have to do is pad up that one side and you're yeah. you're golden, okay? So it's not a difficult thing, okay? okay? You're trying to make surface contact. That's all you're trying to do, okay? Now, some signs that you're having problems. What are some of the most common signs that you're having fit problems? Your horse is not like the saddle. My horse will actually get upset. Yeah. And I can tell that he is not, he'll kick his belly. <laughs> yeah, weird. he'll move and away so from there, he'll kind of kick, kick back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good one. What are some other ones? Sore in the shoulders. Sore in the shoulders, right? When you brush them, the when you, yeah, they're palpated a little bit, they get sore in the shoulders, they're very sensitive. What are some other areas? People sir? The buck. The buck, yes sir. Yeah, absolutely will buck. Mm, yes ma'am. They won't collect. They won't collect, right? So they kind of, they get choppy, especially in gated horses. They get more choppy as a result of that. Sure, what are some other ones? Because there's too much pressure in that area sometimes. White hairs. White hairs, yes. Probably right. the most common that people think about. What is that? White, White hair. Hairs. White hair. Oh, okay. There's one more that's the biggest. Somebody just asked me about it. Dry spots, that's the big one, dry spots, okay? Yeah, and so typically, typically if people don't catch soaring issues, what they start noticing is dry spots and white hair. All the other symptoms have blown past them and they see those things, okay? Dry spots and white hair. So let's talk about that for a minute, okay? Dry spots is caused by a lot of pressure in one area over an extended amount of time. Okay, let me say that again. A lot of pressure in one area for an extended amount of time. One ride is not an extended amount of time. Two rides is not an extended amount of time. Several rides for several hours is an extended amount of time. What happens is the pressure kills the sweat glands, the horse stops sweating there, most often his hair will turn white. Okay, that's what happens. Now it's become a scar. And most often the horse may not sweat there ever again. It's, he might get his hair color back, but he won't sweat there again. You don't have to go put your horse down, you don't have to change anything, okay? But what you have now is a horse that doesn't sweat there anymore. That's all you have. So now you have to look for other issues. And it's the issues you all mentioned, bucking, swirly hair, the horse runs away from you, tender area. You have to start looking for other things other than dry spot because the dry spot deal has already happened. So if you go out and buy a horse, and you've never owned a horse before, this gentleman just bought a horse, and, um, and, um, and you have dry spots, you need to ask yourself, has that horse ever had sweat there before, or it could have been previous damage with the other owner right? that's causing the dry spots. Your saddle now could fit great, and your horse not sweat there anymore. That's just the lay of the land. May not ever sweat there again, most often they do not, okay? Now, the other thing that could cause dry spots is, if I'm at your house and I accidentally spilled red wine on your nice carpet, what do you do to get up the, the, the red wine? You start <laughs> other than the straw. Okay. What do you do to get it up? OxyClean. OxyClean. <laughs> yeah. and, and so you get OxyClean, you spray it on there, then what do you do? Rub it, soak it up first. Yeah, so how do you soak it up? Dry top. No, no, but tell everybody what you just did. Oh, okay. Dab. You dabbed yeah. it. You dabbed it. When you dab it, it soaks up the moisture, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we buy really nice pads to do what? Soak up the moisture. Soak up the moisture. Sometimes when you have dry spots, your pad's doing its job. Okay? You, it's got pressure, it's soaking up the moisture, and the horse is dry. So you guys are going to have to decide what do you want. Do you want dry spots? because a pad's doing his job, or you want sweat. And so um, I was in Minneapolis. This lady wanted to buy a girl saddle from me. Truthfully, my, I couldn't find one to fit her horse. That was my brand. I found a competitor's brand. I put it on there. Man, it looked like it was made for it. You know, sucked right down. She said, man, this is awesome. She rode around the <coughs> round pen. And listen, let me say this. If you've got a horse and you've tried 20 saddles and none of them work, you are either overthinking it or you have a really bad horse. Okay? <laughs> because there's not that many bad saddles out there, okay? You're over overthinking it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice yeah. And so, um, and so um, she rode around for 20 minutes. I walked off, did other stuff. She came back. 
She loved it. She was gonna buy it. She pulled off and the horse was dry and the show was ooh, dry spots. She started going through this whole deal. And I could tell what, working with her for two hours that all I was was a salesman. And if I told her anything else, she wasn't gonna believe it because she already believed in herself more than she believed in me, which is fine. And I said, ma'am, you're right. I guess it doesn't work. And, but I knew what took place. I turned over the pad that we had. It was really wet in that area and dry in the rest. And if you're having dry spots, one of the things you can do is feel underneath your pad and see how wet it is in the shoulder area. Most often, if your pad is doing its job, it's soaking up that moisture and you've got more likely so a better fit than not just their yeah, back. Yeah, oh. check the pad more than, sometimes more than the back. Your pad will tell you lots of things, okay? And so, uh, and so now you, if you, you, you're gonna do that and find that the rest of the pad is dry and think it's not making contact in that area, that's not the purpose, okay? But if you're having dry spots, most often where it's touching the most is where your pad will soak up most of the moisture, okay? And you'll start seeing it doing that if your horse is dry in that area. So the pad is actually doing its job. But dry spots is one of the signs of a bad fitting saddle. It's not always one of the signs. You have to look for other things. If you continue to have dry spots, then maybe you need to look at your pad. If you continue to have dry spots with that, then maybe you need to ask yourself, has my horse ever sweat there before? Mm -hmm. Or it could have been the previous saddle that I owned that caused the damage. It's not always the current saddle that you own. It could fit fine. So if you have dry spots and the saddle fits fine, you can't find a problem, even though you're trying to find a problem, go on and enjoy your horse. Yeah. Okay, everything is golden, don't worry about it, okay? The other thing you need to know is short coupled. Okay, short coupled horses can be difficult to fit. Why? Usually short coupled horses get have a slope that's quicker than a long back horse. And so you have to have a, a saddle, the middle of the saddle is called rock, like a rocking chair. You have to have a saddle that has more rock in it than other saddles, or you have to have some kind of pad to fill in that area, or the saddle will bridge. Bridging is when it makes contact in the front and in the back, but not in the middle. Think of a sway back horse, okay? That's a very good example. You have a lot of bridge, that means none of this, or some of this is not making contact, okay? That can happen on short couple horses, Arabs, a pacifinos, uh, some of your short back walkers that we like to collect, you can have some bridging problems as a result of that. Now here's the downside with short coupled horses. Typically people who are overweight like to buy small horses. Why is that? So you can get it on and off. Yeah, that's the reason. They get the foot in the stirrup, they get it on and off. The downside is that short, people who are heavier than normal have to get bigger saddles. The longer all this stays the same, when I push the only way I can get a longer seat is to push this cannel back. What do you think I have to do when I push this cannel back? I have to do to this. Make it longer. I have to make it longer. I have to keep extending it. So every time I push this thing back one inch, I have to make the bar an inch and a half longer. So if it's a 16 inch and the bar is 22 and a half inches, you make it a 17 inch. Now the bar is 24 inches. You make it 18 inch. Now the bar is 26 and a half inches. And you have the skirt to go on top of that. The tightest you can make the skirt is, is about an inch and a half longer than the actual bar. You know, you can make it longer than that, but that's the smallest you can make it. So if, if you have a short coupled horse and you need a big seat, you need to reconsider having a short coupled horse because you need a big seat. Because every time you move this back, you're moving this back. And this, you can't change that, okay? Yeah, I wish you could. And so typically when you do saddle fitting where this concho is in here, that's where this is. I have to have some place to screw in the concho. So when you're doing saddle fitting, when you could look at where this is and where this inch, you see where the bar is gonna fit, okay? And so it just kind of helps out with, with the fitting when you go through that. So the shorter back your horse is, the heavier you are, big negative, okay, unfortunately. And so if you, if you need a big seat, you need to make sure you have a horse's back long enough for that long of a bar. Or you have to go English. English pretty much is, is very short small tree the concept is the same there's actually less weight to disperse because the tree is much smaller so you're dispersing more pounds per inch so you can actually have a higher degree of fitting issues when it comes but the concept is still the same okay and so let me back up uh, well let me say this in our industry also there's or in every industry there's no cost in geometry geometry is free I was in Brighton, Colorado. A lady came in and wanted a tucker saddle. I wanted her to have a tucker saddle really bad, but it didn't fit her horse. 
and the horse was just kind of a weird confirmation. I couldn't find one. I took a synthetic saddle built on a, a very cheap tree and it fit the horse great. She went from wanting to spend $1,800 to $600 and it fit just fine. You know why? Because geometry has no cost. Just because you have an expensive saddle doesn't mean you can fit your horse any better than a cheap saddle, okay? And you're looking for fit. Now expensive saddle has sometimes better leather, better tree, better hardware, better fleece. There's lots of reasons why it could be, you know, tooling, could be hand tooled. You know, there's other, typically there's other things that make the saddle more expensive, but the core of the saddle still has to fit the horse. In anything that you buy, whether it's a flex saddle, all the way to treeless, the core of the saddle still has to fit or none of the concepts work. See, a treeless saddle is not treeless. A treeless saddle is barless. A treeless saddle doesn't have this, but it still has this and it's wood and it still has this and it's wood. That still has to fit. Now these are bigger at the base on a treeless saddle, but we still make it in tree wings. So anything that's out there, there's not one concept that's out there unless it's a bareback pad that um, does it have something that needs to fit? Everything has to fit, okay? And so in, in, in the flex saddle, this is actually, I had to build this up in different colors so you can kind of see it. This is circle wise flex tree. Flex is generic in our industry. There's good ones and there's bad ones, okay? There are some flex saddles that are built out of a flexible material that don't flex at all, but they're able to call it flex. In circle wise flex tree, our saddle flexes with movement. It does not flex with fit. So even in the flex saddle, you still have to fit the core of the saddle. And then it moves in the tips, here and here. It's got high density in the middle, doesn't move in the middle, it just moves with horses movement. So when you put this on a horse's back, it's gonna look like it fits really snug because there's no flare. See how the front of the saddle has flare in the front of it? In the front of it? The flex saddle has no flare in the front of it. See how it's real straight? But what it does is it moves with movement. And so gated people love it. Barrel people love it. Uh, people that have lots of shoulder movement really like that saddle because it moves with the horse's movement. It actually has a pad system, the skirting system where there's neoprene underneath it, there's no leather underneath it. Allows the heat to come through from the horse and becomes more flexible in the hips and shoulders when you ride it. So it really moves with the horse's movement. And we've, um, we've upgraded it, we call it the Flex 2 now, to where now we even make an 18 inch seat head because it's a high grade, high fiberglass ground seat and it doesn't over flex. So it, it makes it a really nice feel. So any questions from all, everything we talked about so far? I'm gonna move on to part number. Yes, sir. Uh, what about the uh, CSI packs and stuff like this for dispersing? Okay. Okay, let's talk about that. That's gonna be the actual part of my part three, okay? Um, when there is a problem, there, there are fixes. And most often, there's uh, pads can fix the issue. Now, this is not one of our pads. It's Weaver. Weaver's a good company, been around a long time. We make a pad just like this also. But it's going to give you an example of things to fix, okay? And so, if you have an asymmetry problem, remember it said a little bigger on one side than the other? This pad actually has inserts all around it in areas. So, if the left side is bigger than the right side, you take the left side insert out put the right side in so it and you just fix an asymmetry problem, okay? If you have a sway back problem, you could take the front out and the back out, leave it in the middle and it helps with sway back problems. If you have a mule and you have a, horse, a saddle that has a lot of rock on it, a typical Western saddle has some rock in it, you could take, put the front and that and take this out of the middle and it helps with the saddle to fit a mule. And so this is just one of a bunch of pads that are out there to help fix problem. If you don't have a problem at all, and you like the pad, you take it all out, and you have a normal saddle pad, and you go right, okay? So there's all kinds of things that are out there to fix problems that might be there. So you don't have to go get a new saddle, even though if you do, you ought to buy a circle wire cutter. You know? <laughs> but if you don't, and you can't afford it, and it's a problem that can be fixed, fix the problem. Because guess what's gonna be there when you go buy a new saddle? Mm -hmm. The problem. Your horse is still asymmetrical. He's still sway back. He's still bigger in the front than in the back, whatever it might be. Your horse is bigger in the front, lower in the hips, put the inserts in the front so it evens it out. If, if your saddle, now get this guys, if the angle of your saddle fits your horse really well but it goes too far down because your horse is kind of thin, 
but the angle still makes contact, just lift up the front a little bit, okay? You don't have to, sometimes a wide tree could be go down too far, but the angle fits your horse. Let's say it's 90 degree angle. Fits your horse really well, all you gotta do is just lift up the front. Padding is good if it fixes a problem. Padding is not good if you're trying to absorb contact. It's like the pee in the mattress. Some of us are old enough to learn that story. Over a period of time, the pain's gonna come through eventually, okay? But if you can pad up to help make contact, padding is good. But a bad fitting saddle, the angle and all that stuff is bad fitting regardless of how much pad you put on. Now the better the saddle fits, the less padding you wanna to try to get away with. Because when you use a one inch pad on a great fitting saddle, you just made the shoulders two inches bigger because it's an inch on both sides, okay? So if you put the saddle on, man, it's just, oh, dude, this thing is awesome. Try to get by with as little padding as possible. I use a half inch felt pad. I kind of know what my walkers like and what I like. I don't like to be spread out a lot, so I get narrow body type walkers and they fit, my saddles typically fit really good. I don't need a lot of padding, okay? So I try to get by this. The padding industry, you can get a half inch, very dense pad, even if you're a heavy rider, and it will absorb a lot of pressure if you're riding long hours. So you can distort your horse's back by over padding sometimes. So the CSI pad, I say all that to answer your question. If you don't have an issue, don't buy an issue pad. And I, I think a CSI pad fixes issues. Now it can help and it, it's really a good product. It's got um, a plastic panel system in it that helps disperse weight, but it's not necessary if your saddle fits really good. Just go out and get a generic pad. Can you still buy one? Absolutely. But you can also buy another pad that costs $100 that would do just as well than going out and buying one that's $250 or $300, okay? And so it really just depends what you're doing. So the better it fits, just go out and get a basic pad. When you have problems, there's great companies out there, CSI, Rangeman, Weaver, Equibrand, there's all kinds of companies that make it. CSI pad, I really like them. Sometimes people have a tendency to over pad with them, but the concept works really, really well. I have a question, uh, uh, around here to the, uh, Yeah, I, I know Lynn. Uh, I know Lynn. Okay, so he claims that if you have a, a plate underneath there, you can actually use the saddle to cut the yeah, and he's, it, it, it's true. Actually, what he's saying is true. That's what CSI, I don't see if I got the concept from him, yeah. but it'd be like if I took my finger and poked it in your, in, in your hand really hard, it would irritate you. But if I took a flat piece of plastic and put there and poked it with you, that piece of hard plastic is gonna disperse the pressure. And that's what Lynn Brown's corrector pad does. And that's kind of what a CSI pad does. It actually fixes a really bad contact point, you know, and it kind of, it's, it gives you a piece of plastic that disperses it. Isn't your flexible uh, pad or bars in the flex screw about the same thing? Uh, a little bit, but not really. It would be better if I if I needed to fix by put another panel system underneath it. Yeah, it's still a tree, what, you know. What about the memory foam pads? The memory foam pads are good. See, they absorb with pressure and not with um, with um, they absorb pressure, not disperse like like um, a closed cell sponge. It, it molds too. Yes, it. yeah. And so where there's pressure, it molds. but there's no pressure, it stays full. So it can help also in those areas. The downside with memory foam when it's really cold, they're very stiff. So you have to give them a chance to warm up and 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 do its job. But yeah, so a memory foam compresses where there's pressure, almost down to nothing. It doesn't compress where there's no pressure, so it helps. So, but if you're trying to absorb weight, then you go like a sponge, a closed cell type sponge of some sort of poron or something that doesn't compress, that actually absorbs the pressure and disperses it. Yeah, good question. Anybody else have any questions about that? Okay, lastly, what if a saddle fits, but you're still having some problems? Sometimes when I go out to help people and they're having a saddle fitting problem, I want to find the problem. If I can't find the problem, that's tough, okay? And uh, and so there's sometimes I can't, but sometimes the problem isn't the saddle, actually, it's the rigging system that's on there or the tree. Some horses' uh, elbow is a little bit further back than others, and so there are saddles. This is not exclusive to us. I'd like to claim it, but I can't. There are saddles out there that have rigging systems where you can place your rigging in different places. 
So you can go to this position and it's three quarter position. You can slide it to the front. I'm gonna do this. You slide it to the front and it's full. Full position means that the ring is directly underneath the swell. When you go in between that halfway between that, then it's called seven eighths. So that's halfway in between. Now the girth is in the middle. When you go all the way back, it's called three quarter. So you can reposition your girth in three different places. And what that does, especially people who have gated horses, have shorters, have a lot of movement, or even barrel racers, when you're trying to make your turns, you need to free up the shoulder. Moving that rigging placement back a little bit really helps in loosening up the shoulders. Gated horses, when that's too much pressure on the weather, makes them get choppy and they don't want to gate because you're, they're, they're, their their um, their shoulders move diagonal this way. For for walk trot canter horse is more like a piston. So you have to free up the shoulders a little bit in order to keep them in their gait when you collect them. And then this saddle actually has a third option where you can go through your girth and go back to this ring here. And it pulls the front and the back of the saddle down and you don't have to use a cinch. You see how that works? Now, what's good about this is, again, pressure. You're trying to relieve pressure when you talk about saddle fitting is you can disperse your pull. You don't have all that pull on the shoulders. And you can put some of it toward the back as well. So you don't have to tighten your cinch as much. You tighten it up as much as you need to without falling, okay? I wanna make sure we got that on video, all right? Okay, don't ride with the loose cinch, but you don't have to tighten it up as much. When you go this way, also, you kind of disperse some of the pull. So you're not putting a lot of pressure on the horse's area. So all that to be said is sometimes your saddle could fit good, but the pull on the rigging could cause some kind of fitting issue. Or this is good if you're trail riding a lot, your horse gets a little sore behind the elbow, you can reposition the girth back a little bit to take away some of that. So there's all great options. And so let me start over, okay? First, there's no standard in our industry for saddle fitting, okay? And so that's on you. If you're gonna go buy a saddle, you ought to talk about your horse's confirmation more than you talk about gelding with, okay? Because there's all different ways we do gelding with. Secondly, is there's no geometry, or there's no cost in geometry, okay, that's out there. Thirdly, not every company stinks because the saddle doesn't fit your horse. All it means is the saddle doesn't fit your horse. Lastly, if your saddle fits pretty good, you're just trying to fix issues, you don't necessarily need a new saddle, you just need to go out and buy some type of pad that can fix those issues. Don't make it difficult. If there's not a problem, if you can't find it, it's probably not there. Go enjoy your horse. Go ride them. People have been riding for hundreds of years before they started talking about saddle. Before Lynn Brown really came along, none of us even considered saddle fitting. You know, literally, I've been building saddles 35 years. People used to come in and buy a saddle and do this. Yeah, I like that. I'll take it. Literally, literally, that's how it was. Now it's an hour long process because you guys want to go through all this, okay? And so before Lynn Brown, nobody talked about it. What were the horses like then? Now they've probably some soaring issues, we didn't pick up on it. But the industry as a whole has gotten so much better out there that if your horse is normal, you can go out and buy a normal saddle and be fine. Most dealers carry normal. And most dealers carry pads to fix non-normal. Now if you really, really have your Icelandic, have tr I actually, um, Walt Disney World bought 30 saddles from us. They have a wilderness area. I don't know if you guys know that. You can actually go there and go trail riding. But we're making saddles for the Headless Horseman horse, Percheron. That dude is at least 18 hands. Even our extra wide didn't fit. He's massive. He's outside of normal. Uh, we can even fix outside of normal when, when you go to that extreme, okay? There's, there's something there for you. But you need to consider when you go to that type of expense, and, and is this the horse I like? Am I gonna keep him forever? You know, because a saddle to fix a, a horse that's really outside of normal is very expensive and more than likely will not fit anything else. Will not fit anything else. So unless it's your baby, you might want to consider doing something different. Make sense? Okay, any final questions? How do you questions? know that you have a big enough seat for your staff, like yourself? That's a good question. It really depends on the discipline, okay? okay? And so if you ride a walk, trot, canter type horse and you like to post, then you need a smaller seat than normal. Why is that? Because I'll use this saddle for example. The fender, which is what your stirrup is in, 
goes through this little slot. It never moves. This seat could be 20 inches long and the fender will still be in this position. This does not move backwards. So if you like to post, you need to put yourself in a position where you get your fenders right underneath you. That means you need a seat that's a little bit tighter than maybe than what you like, if you like to post. If you like to sit back and relax, like most gated people do want to get their feet or just mm -hmm. recreational riders, then you go a little bit bigger than what you need because you're going to wear a little extra clothes to get your weight. you go by feel when you're sitting in it? Yeah, or, or, or discipline. Barrel okay. racers, they want a very tight seat because they don't want to have to search for the horn. Roper, uh, Clay Tryon, who's the world champion, he's one of our guys, he's a big man, rides a 14 and a half inch roping saddle. He really needs a 16 inch seat, but his discipline demands, he doesn't want to look for his, his horn. He throws, he goes right to his stomach, and he dies. Oh. And so the discipline would determine what okay. you want to ride. But typically, if you're trail riding, yeah. most people want to go a little bigger than what they like. They like to sit back and relax. If you're riding gators, people, they want to go even further back. They want to sit back like a recliner. <laughs> but if you walk, you're riding a walk, trot, canter type horse, then you need to have kind of a tighter seat. Okay. So that answer is by comfort and by discipline. Okay. There's, there's, I can kind of look at you and tell you what I would suggest. But then you, you have to, no, I won't say it out loud. I don't talk about women's weight at all. I don't even, if, if, you weighed, if you weighed 100 pounds, I still wouldn't say it, okay? Yeah, I've been there before. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm just turning around looking. I know. So I'm trying to say I'm taking my saddle. I'm going to see how it fits on this horse. I'm going to throw it on without the blanket. Without what am I going to look at? And just look at it. And all you become is a visual person. And again, when it doesn't fit, it's really obvious. You start seeing gaps. So yeah, what will yeah. I see? Cause yeah, well, what you see is this. Let's say that this is your horse's back, okay? Okay. You put it on there. You come in and you put your hand underneath here. You start. I mean, literally, it'll be very obvious when you do like this. If you slide your hand underneath your bar, you know. Okay. Then, but if you in there, you have to force your hand to go underneath your bar. You're making contact. Okay. You know. So I want that. I want that. Contact you want this contact. Okay, now here's the, all the, way through the back. back. Here's the deal. Yeah, turn that around. The skirt starts about an inch and a half above the bar. Okay. This is the bar. Right. So you don't really care if you see this as much. You're okay. fitting the bar. So about an inch and a half below that, you're looking for contact to, okay. to begin. Okay. Can you turn that? I didn't see that. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the skirt starts about an inch and a half above oh, okay. the bar. Inch right. and a half to two inches depending on the saddle. So you're looking for contact to start somewhere here. Okay. If you stick your hand underneath this area, let's say where the concho is, right. hypothetically, then you stop good. Okay. okay. Now if you can stick it in this front part, that means you just have enough flare. Yeah. And that's that's okay. okay. But if you can stick it in, I'm talking about up to your end of your fingers, into your palm. And the same way here, go underneath mm -hmm. and the bar, you can feel it, it's like an hourglass. And it, it's really not hard, guys. Okay. I wish I could that make it difficult. That actually makes it simpler yeah. than other it's, stuff. It's really work. simple to see if a saddle fits or doesn't fit, okay? okay. And so, um, and, and really... Now what about the bridging? Because it's like, you know, I just stick my hand up there. That's there, all you do. You can look at the top of it, but if it's really bridging, you just come in, tap a palm down, and go underneath this way, okay? And if, it, not, if it's snug, you're good. Because horses back, actually, they collect themselves a little bit when you start riding, really okay? Right there. Yeah, they're gonna come up a little bit. But if you just, you're looking for freedom. If you got freedom, it's, it's not good, okay? Okay, are yeah. you doing all this without the pad on? Oh yeah, you do everything without a pad. Okay. And then you start building up to it. Okay. You know, you put a pad on, okay. and uh, some people will get on, they'll push on one side, push down the other. Your saddle can still fit your horse and not sit down on them. Okay. And so you can have a saddle that rows. Now there's a couple fixes for that. One is, we have, um, we actually make a nesting pad where it's a memory foam and the bar nest into the pad helps it from sliding left to right mm -hmm. or you can get I need to figure out a better terminology you can get a piece of leather and go from this side all the way to your girth uh -huh. we call it a fat strap <laughs> and people who like to get their foot in their stirrup and really pull out their saddle and it pulls the saddle over it's actually a counter weight and to keep the saddle from sliding on you. Okay. And so if you have a saddle that slides like that, but you know it fits, you can actually put on one of those straps and it counters the pull and it keeps it from sliding from side to side. Now yeah. what about clearance like with your withers? Cause like 
I don't, I I don't care that about that. Snow. Yeah, I mean, I don't want it to touch. If it's not touching, I'm good because I'm not fitting the wither, I'm fitting the bar. Okay. Now, in Tucker Saddles, hypothetically, we have a lot of gullet area, this area, because we fit varieties of horses. And so we realize we're not fitting gullet. So if you're not used to seeing a lot of this, you'll look at it and it'll visually think that saddle doesn't fit. If you're not fitting that, you're fitting the bar. So okay. we have a lot of freedom here, okay? Because okay. also a lot of Morgans have their, um, when they collect themselves, they come way back into the back. Mm -hmm. And if we have this really low, it actually push the saddle back. And so we, because we're fitting multiple confirmations, some of our trees are made differently in order to do that. But again, we're fitting the bar, we're not fitting the gullet. Mm -hmm. So I just don't want the gullet touching. I don't care two fingers, five fingers, whatever you're looking at. Okay. That's so not just, the case. Just no touching. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you have a saddle, it's touching, but it fits good, get you a cut back pad. You know, that's cut yeah. out of this area. Yeah. So it lifts up the body without lifting up the wither. Does that make sense? Yeah. It lifts this up, but it doesn't lift up the wither. Yeah. Hey, I'm new to Western Gray. I always Me too. Saddles. Yeah. <laughs> so this Morgan I have that used to be mutton wither. I sent him to a trainer because I was ill for a while and I wanted her to get him muscled up. Well, she put a pad on him that was way too long on the saddle and it rubbed a big old spot in the because He's old fashioned Morgan, but he still comes up. Yeah. So now he's underweight. Should I wait to buy a saddle or does the actual saddle fit at the wither whether he muscles yeah. up and brings the How old is he? He's 13. He's not going to change a whole lot in the fit area, okay, in that area. And so, um, uh, but if you're going to make a mistake, make a mistake a little larger, okay, because you can always fix that. You can't fix up too narrow, okay? okay. So if you have lots of horses and you can only afford one saddle, you either buy for what you're riding the most or you're buying for the bigger horse because then you can pad up a little bit, okay? And so for you, I would buy, if, if, I, if I was going to make a mistake, just make sure, make sure the angle is good. If the angle is good, buy a little bigger than what you And think. then like that saddle pad, you could fill it in you until, fill it he in until he gets the muscle back up. Until he gets the muscle back up. This first time in his life, he ever had withers. Yeah. And now there's white spots all over him. And yeah. It's, I feel bad for him now because I don't have anything that fits. Yeah, hey, let me say, white spots is like a, it's like a scar. It's not necessarily an embolism or how do you say it? something bad it's not something bad okay it's bad but it's not something that you just have to freak out about every okay. time okay it's, it's just a sign and you can fix that okay just move on okay and so um, I say that to you so I want you to feel comfortable you can still go out and ride and so if you're just not sweating in that area anymore you know and his hair turned white but you could be doing a great job it's now. bald it's not white oh, well, that's, that's I, got, I yeah. told her I, yeah, I brought the cut out saddle pad yeah. so I hope that helped yeah. And, and let me also say that horses have um, memory. And so if you have a fit issue and you go out and get a saddle that does fit and they still bite at you, they have memory. It's going to take some while, a while for them to realize that that right. saddle doesn't hurt anymore right. or it's not going to be a painful deal, okay? And so you have to give that an opportunity to run its course as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You started to talk a little bit. So there is a correlation with the size of the rider, though, to a degree you need to consider with the seat size. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. It's not just about how you want to sit. It's no, there's the correlation in seat size okay. with the size of the rider, yeah. You just want to confirm that. Yeah, but some, some disciplines, riders ride smaller than they actually need because of the discipline demands it. But like team roping, if you ever notice those guys, they're only in the saddle about... 20 minutes and as soon as they're done riding they loosen up the girth because they really tighten it up they do all kinds of stuff so yeah there are some disciplines that demand differently but if you're just out pleasure riding the size of the rider will strongly determine what seat size you get as well you have are you question. available to go if a, for any consumer wants to buy a saddle to come out and look at a horse like i live in tennessee i'm leaving i'm not doing the same time soon so what would you suggest i have a salesman who's really good who, okay. who would be here if he wasn't at the virginia horse fair okay. you can call our company and we can have david come by and he'll do that for you or let's say you go to big d do they have people there that are knowledgeable enough to, to help they will after they, they watch this yeah, we have <laughs> okay yeah yeah and i've talked to the ladies in there they're pretty bright okay yeah yeah they're not one of them we talked south fit really well okay and uh but if they can't help you or whatever yeah. then my salesman comes okay. this area quite often 
Okay. And we do drive to people's places and help them out. Is, is there a charge to have them come out and, and do Not if I tell them to do it, if you just call them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a question. For you guys, Atlantic, you probably ought to have David come out too. <laughs> he has trees and he's very knowledgeable. He's one of our longest tenure so people. So what do you think about the tree being air-to-air -air versus like a wall and saddles that are down there in the and the wall please thing? What do you think yeah. about I, you know, again, all of those have merit. The core of the saddle has to fit. Okay, and so none of them mean anything if the saddle doesn't fit. Okay. All it does it allows air to circulate more. Tucker uses felt because you get a closer contact. It's lighter weight. It's actually 100% wool skirting material, so you don't need, need enough padding. Circle Y uses the fleece on their flex saddles, but they have a closed cell sponge inside of it to help heat. The, you know, so everything. Everybody's got something. And then you have your traditional, it's, it, but it just has to fit. None of it means anything if it doesn't fit. I know, I know. Yeah. You don't know the yeah. saddles. Yeah, I mean, the, I've got friends who build saddles that have air chambers. You can blow it up, but the tree has to fit, or that means nothing. So it still has to work. Yeah. None of that stuff means anything if the core of the saddle doesn't fit. Okay. We're going to do a couple pad giveaways.